So I will just start very briefly with a small introduction about Knowledge Rights 21. We're, we're a project focused on bringing about legislative and practical change across Europe to strengthen the right of knowledge for everyone in society. We have many areas of uh, activity. As today, one of the areas that we work on is open science, but in, in the area of copyright law, we focus on issues such as ebooks, better platform regulation to support education and research institutes, institutions, a right to a right to access digital content in the way that we have a right to access analog content, the non-override of copyright flexibilities for teaching and research by contracts and technical protection measures. And another area that we are wor working on is open norms or sort of more flexible approaches to copyright than we see in Europe. And actually on that, um, I'll just do a quick plug before we kick off. On the 15th of February, we have another webinar called, called Normalising Open Norms. Uh, this is uh, coming from Bournemouth University, who are about to issue a Knowledge Rights 21 commissioned report looking at uh, flexible the introduction of flexible uh, open norms flexible copyright exceptions in seven different jurisdictions those jurisdictions being a mix of um, common law jurisdictions hybrid jurisdictions and civil law jurisdictions so um, if you're interested in that please register that's up on our website so I think um, on on today's topic, also just to let you know, uh, we have two reports, uh, one on author rights retention and the other on secondary publishing rights. So if you look at the Knowledge Rights 21 website in the top right hand corner, you'll see various different drop downs. If you look there for reports and position statements, you, you can see uh, two reports, one from Spark Europe, the other from LIBA, the European Research Libraries Association, plus a position statement from Knowledge Rights 21 on secondary publishing rights. So I guess um, last but not least, um, you'll hear a bit of jargon today. So I've already started with the jargon, secondary publishing rights. In Sweden, they talk about Parallel publishing rights, which is a term that I quite like, suggesting that you can, in parallel with the journal version of record publication, in parallel publish in an open repository the same article. You'll also hear the word author rights retention. Um, and I think let's not get too hung up on the jargon, the terminology. They're, they are they are similar they are slightly different but essentially the the commonality that runs through all these terms is 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 what we're driving for which is that publicly funded research um should be made uh contemporaneously in parallel made immediately ideally available uh online so Publicly funded research uh, is obviously funded using taxpayers' money from large uh, research funders. And those large research funders fund that research in order that the results are in the public domain and can be used by other researchers, but also by businesses. So we have, as everyone knows, a mismatch between the goal of the funding, why taxpayers' money is being used, and actually the fact that traditionally uh, governments have allowed publicly funded research to be locked up in, in the private coffers of uh, STM publishers primarily. So this is what these sort of bodies of law that we see emerging are seeking to do, give immediate public access to publicly funded research. And, and sort of the terminology and how we get there, I think, is 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 less important. important. So with no further ado, I will hand, hand over to Dr. Meyer 
Ogutai Jancic, who will talk about the exciting developments that we've seen of late in Slovenia. Thank you very much, Ben. I uh, started to share the screen. Please tell me that you're seeing my PowerPoint yep. nice and clearly. Yeah. So thank you very much. So first of all, uh, thanks for Knowledge Rights 21 to organize this event. It's a great opportunity to finally tell, well, to finally, to tell again to the broader audience about some very, very good developments that we are uh, facing here in Slovenia. Uh, it all started with the very good progress during the copyright reform in 2022, when uh, in October 2022, Slovenia finished implementation of Digital Single Market Directive. And uh, I'm happy to report also to this audience that the result is that we have new TDM exception for, t for scientific uh, research and also a general TDM exception. And finally, after more than 20 years uh, featuring in InfoSoc directive, we finally got also the new general research, research exception. Exception one, well, two, TDM and, uh, and general research. Um, it was remarkable also to see that for the very first time during the copyright reform, the stakeholders for science, research, cultural heritage, institution and education were really energized and came together and uh, proposed on a larger scale um, uh, very simple demands that which basically said we please we want more transparent process of the copyright development and stakeholders from, from our front have an important stake in this process. So please copyright is not just about business, but it's also about research, science, education, and, and uh, cultural heritage institution. Uh, the Ministry for Commerce and our copyright office did not welcome very much uh, the, uh, the energy from the side of stakeholders. So it was uh, difficult to sustain, but we, uh, we managed to, uh, to put forward many, many, many times elaborated arguments. And the result is for sure new TDM exception uh, for scientific research, which enables digitalization of analog access, uh, making available of the resources and also sharing the results of TDM for the TDM purposes. And also it's important to say that the exception also has some teeth uh, if the copyright holders do not uh, actually uh, provide access to, to the beneficiaries of the exception, they can face after the mediation, meditation, mediation process also some penalties. We'll see how this will uh, play in practice. There is also one problem that uh, content on open web is sort of omitted from the Slovenian implementation. So uh, I, I'm looking forward for the future that some beneficiaries who actually understand what TDM copyright exception is about will actually try to, to challenge this in front of the European Court of Justice. So many interesting things ahead. But this is about the copyright development uh, and about the Copyright Act. Today's presentation is focused on what uh, what has been done on the front of open science. And on the front of open science, so far, nothing has been achieved in the Copyright Act. So it's there are some still some things that there, uh, that needs to be uh, done on this front. I will mention at, at the end of this presentation, when I will conclude what has been done on the front of open science, what also needs to be done on the front of open science in the Copyright Act. Of course, I have on my mind, I can already say now, to diminish barriers that exist, potentially exist in Copyright Act for Open Science, and also to increase incentives. Of course, I have secondary publication rights on my mind. But let me explain before that, what is the current state of the art in the area of open science in Slovenia? I think I will, I will, uh, I heard that expression first from Ben when he was visiting us during the Open Knowledge Day that we have the, uh, the top to bottom approach in Slovenia. And it's true. 
But I would also say that we have a combination of both. We have top bottom measures and we have bo bottom up action. So top bottom is def has definitely started with the Scient Scientific Research and Innovation Activities Act back in 2021, when there was a quick, cha quick change of, of, uh, of one provision, which already laid down foundations that the funders that the public funders from different resources will demand from the recipients of the funds to, uh, to make the results coming from, from the research funded in, the, in that way available uh, under the conditions of open access. So uh, after that, so this was the, this was the first, first uh, uh, legislative in instrument. Then it followed a huge resolution on the Slo Slovenian scientific research and innovation st strategy until 2023, 2030, where suddenly open science played incre a very, very important role. So in the most important strategic document that concerned scientific research and innovation strategy, open science played a very, very important role. Then, the la then the, um, in the last year, uh, we, uh, um, the government also um, implemented or, uh, yes, enacted decree on the implementation of scientific research work in accordance with the principles of open science. That means that it developed the general provision from the Scientific Research and Innovation Activities Act into more detailed provisions, which uh, which uh, build the framework for open science and most importantly for rights retention uh, uh, in Slovenia from top to bottom. Uh, but of course, in addition to that, there is also action plan for open science, which give additional structural, structural support and quite a lot of funds to support implementation of principles of open science. So it, there is not ju just legislation and obligation on the side of recipients of funds, but there is also like uh, a lot of resources uh, given to the, to the, uh, to the public, uh, public interest research organizations that needs to obey principles of open science to, be, to, to, um, to make the transition and to, uh, and to start acting accordingly. So it's not just there is a law and then you find find uh, the way yourself, but actually it's a law, it's a law plus um, a great support in the form of action plan. And of course, all of this would not be possible. Laws do not happen just from the sky, but uh, they do not fall from the sky. There were always people at the Ministry of Science who understood uh, open science and who were determined to bring the principles that we were uh, seeing on the level of European Union back, uh, back home to Slovenia. So that, that was the regional plan and the reflection is in this um, strategic uh, actions and also legislative instruments. And of course, at the same time, um, the bottom-up things were happening as well. Already in 2014, Sl Slovenian universities launched an open science portal and then a um, couple of, uh, well, in the uh, last two years, there was a huge organization of Slovenian open science community. Since the beginning and also today, the Slovenian Library Association is most active on this front, especially uh, university libraries, uh, most notably uh, Central Technical Library at University of Ljubljana and, um, and University Library from Maribor University are currently the most active and are leading all these initiatives. And lately also POSRIS, which is a coordination of independent nonprofit research and infrastructure institutes, they were all also already active during the copyright reform uh, because they understand what is important um, for science on the copyright front. And of course, uh, they understand why open science is very, very important. Uh, currently, there is a huge project underway, Project Spoznai, uh, which is actually uh, an action uh, that, that, um, led by Central Technical Libraries. Through this uh, project, funds are distributed and uh, huge support is built to the public 
interest uh, to the public, um, to the nonprofit research institutes to actually convert to the principles of open science. So the main message is that there, there are some great leg legislative instruments. I will get into more detail uh, now, but there is also a bigger support on, on this structural strategic uh, front, uh, quite, a, quite a lot of um, quite a lot of funds is um, is there for the institutions to uh, to play according to principles of open science. So um, as I, I as I said uh, at the beginning, re um, Scientific Research and Innovation Activities Act from 2021 and decree on the implementation of a, a scientific research working in accordance with the principles of open science build the legislative framework uh, that is in addition supported by the resolu first resolution strategically and then structurally by action plan. So in the Scientific Research and Innovation Act, um, there was an important article uh, in this act. Uh, since, there is an important article since 2021 which says that for research co-finance in the amount of at least 50% public funding, the funding provider shall request and the researcher shall provide. provide. So the funder puts, it, it is up to the funder to request and it's up to the researcher to provide open access to all peer-reviewed peer scientific publications and research data and other research resu results. So not just publication, but all research results, which are defined um, the, uh, uh, very broadly, and it's metadata and it's uh, scientific publications, other research uh, results, also, also software. So broad interpretation. And if it's 50 or more, um, they, um, the recipients of funds need to provide open access immediately. But of course, uh, there is just this obligation. It is in the law. It is in the national law, and it's uh, more in the detail implemented in the decree. But it's still just obligation in the national legislation that concerns research. Why I'm highlighting this because th there is this act. There is scientific research and innovation act. There is decree on open science. But there is currently still no changes of the copyright law. It is also important to say that it's much, probably much easier, easier in political sense to change Scientific Research and Innovation Act and to implement decree in, uh, in the field of science than to change Copyright Act. There, other forces, political forces, come into play that I'm sure the audience is very familiar with. So. Um, later, uh, as the impl in, uh, implementation of the scientific act, the decree on the implementation of scientific research in accordance with the principle of open science was implemented. This was in 2023, and uh, every all the stakeholders were anticipating this, cre this decree uh, very nervously, because uh, especially myself, I was like, con I was very, very concerned that uh, maybe, although Slovenia is a very small market, let's put it in this way, um, the, the progressive um, legislation may give some ideas to the interested st stakeholders to hinder this legislation, but we got it and we have it. So um, it concerns uh, the, it lays down the implementation of scientific research activities in accordance with the principles of open science. And again, is, is the most important uh, is the 50% or more. So uh, when there is a funding of 50% of more and it's uh, explained not just uh, funding, public funding that comes from Slovenia, but also broader. In these cases, the, the research results which are scientific publications, scientific monographs, and other types of peer-reviewed publication research data and software as a result of research, all of this needs to be um, needs to be uh, governed according to these principles. And of course, 
in this group, the most important um, provisions concern uh, copyright management of scientific publications and copyright ma management of research data and other research results. And it's important that, uh, that uh, according to the decree, um, the copyright and scientific publications may only be, the copyright on this can only be transferred to third parties on a non-exclusive basis by the authors of the scientific publications or by their employers when the rights are transferred to them. I, I will explain this formulation according to Slovenian copyright law when physical person, when the author creates copyright, copyright work, uh, all uh, rights west, um, the author is original owner of the copyright copyrights. It can transfer copyright and assign copyright with the contract, contract but in the case of employer-employee relationship, there is presumption in our law that the material rights are transferred to the employers for the first 10 years. So also the decree has a detailed ex, um, explanation according to this uh, provision, according to this situation. So in some cases, the author will, will still keep the rights, but in cases when the research re re results will be uh, created in the, um, in the employer-employee relationship, in this case, this rules concern employers so this, these are two different situations it's laid out then in both situation the 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 work needs to be licensed on non-exclusive basis uh, uh, under the licenses that are that uh, allows to anyone to freely use modify and share the scientific publication in accordance with the principles of scientific research ethic and it's also um, by example, the CC by license or attribution share like license is applicable in this in these cases. Um, there is different this concerns copyright management of scientific publications. There is um, a different license uh, and demands for the for other for research data and other research re results. Um, on the topic, I, I was heavily involved in drafting of this provision, so don't get upset when the research data is in this provision with, with the contra argument that data as such are not protected by copyright, cop copyright law. Uh, we took in consideration this, of course, and um, only where copyright related rights or other rights of the author arise in research data. So not in data as such, but only if this arise uh, in data or in other research results, this uh, provision kicks in and this obligation kicks in. Um, it is uh, challenging and difficult sometimes to explain to the researchers that there is no special intellectual property regime on the data as such. Um, so this this was heavily debated provision during the during the drafting of the of this decree um, because uh, I can confirm this because I was involved in this uh, as the same as other um, stakeholders or representatives from from research institutes universities and uh, and other in institutions but this is the result. Um, one challenge that we are going to face in the future is that this obligation to um, manage copyright according to the to open science has exceptions, and currently uh, this is um, this exception is regulated in Article Four, Paragraph Four. And it's written in the case of justified exceptions referred to in the preceding paragraph, research data and other research results share where possible be made openly accessible in an anonymized form or controlled in restricted form. And why I'm reading this, I realized that I copy pasted the wrong paragraph of this provision. What I wanted to highlight is that this article uh, also have paragraph three, which says that exceptions to fully open access to research data and other research results shall be permitted in justified cases 
where fully open access is prevented by the protection of intellectual property, protection of personal data, security of persons or of the, of the state of other legal constraint. The justification for the exception shall be explained in the data management plan. Uh, okay, the problem we, is have, that, we have three minutes, Maya. Okay, uh, this, what I want to highlight in this audience, which I have it as an expert audience, is that the exceptions to open access in rights retention policy are, are potentially the most problem, um, the source of mo many problems and, and even lawsuits that maybe will come in the future in this area. So they need to be drafted very carefully. I think that there will be some new changes on this front in Slovenia. So uh, what's next? In the next minute and a half, I need to tell what is next in Slovenia. Uh, there, there is an initiative uh, of the Rector's Conference of the Republic of Slovenia. That's basically the presidents of the, pub, of the, of the public universities uh, about the inclusion of the right to secondary publication without temporary inaccessibility or embargo in the Copyright Act or Scientific Research and Innovation Activities Act. So the Rector's Conference addressed this demand or this proposition to the Ministry of Science and the Ministry of Commerce. So potentially there will be secondary publication rights uh, on the top of rights retention. How, how this will be done, probably at the beginning with the change of the uh, act on, on science, but probably later to be really effective, there will need to be changes the, also for the Copyright Act. And what, uh, what's next additionally? I hope that there will be the link and, uh, and relink of the activation and energy of the open science community to the copyright reform for open science and science and research. What I mean by this, <coughs> Community of representatives were very active during the last copyright reform, but with all this positive movement and also like a lot of money coming for open science, I, it seems that their, their attention is now exclusively on the open science. But of course it needs to be, uh, the synergy needs to be done. The community needs to take care about open science, but also there needs to be con constant alarm and alert and energy invested to, to um, rebalance copyright um, and be engaged in the copyright reform. Why this, this is important? During the last copyright reform, I identified many potential obstacles for open science. They come in the form of unwaivable rights for remuneration and things like that. And I'm happy to report to this audience that Knowledge Rights 21 is not just organizing this presentation here, but is also financing study a uh, pilot study on barriers and incentives for open science in copyright law. So we will, in the, on the case of Slovenian law, analyze what barriers exist and then propose how to resolve that, that barriers. And also, we'll also talk about best incentives. One of them is, of course, secondary publication rights. So I, I hope that there will be much more good news coming from for Slovenia. For the end, I want to say thank you for listening to me. Thank you to the Knowledge Rights 21 for enabling me to do all the work here in Slovenia. Thank you to Arcadia to sponsoring Knowledge Rights 21 to enabling me to do all this great work. If you have any addi additional questions, I know that there are many, please uh, send me an email, maya.bogatai. And at the end also um, I ask Ben, to um, inform the audience that's present today that ODP, that's Open Data and Intellectual Property Institute, is organizing also webinars to increase knowledge um, about copyright and more about this, you can see on the link in the chat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maya. Um, it's, if we can, oh, thank you very much. So now we have uh, Anna Lazarova. And are you able to do this in about 15 minutes? So that gives us just over 10 minutes to do some Q&As. Uh, I have actually planned for a longer presentation, but I'll try to, Thank you very much. Uh, to make it a, a briefer. Thank you, Ben. Uh, dear colleagues, um, 
Um, good afternoon. It's afternoon here in Bulgaria. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Knowledge Rights 21's team for uh, this initi initiative and the opportunity to talk about the Bulgarian uh, take on the um, SPR uh, at this workshop. And our take is, I mean, uh, I should mention that uh, our SPR solution is uh, of copyright nature, uh, unlike uh, the Slovenian one. Um, First, I'd like to briefly introduce Digital Republic, which is uh, formerly the KR21 National Coordinator for Bulgaria. This is a Bulgarian digital rights nonprofit. Uh, we have been involved in the EU copyright reform, and it's uh, admittedly very lengthy national implementation in Bulgaria uh, from a user point of view, advocating for a more coherent approach towards access to knowledge and culture. And in the recent years, the organization has built a very good relationship with representatives of both the public and academic libraries in Bulgaria and have been helping the Bulgarian Library Association and other non-governmental organization in the sector to with the copyright aspects of their work. Uh, and now, as a part of the KR21 program, Digital Republic has been focusing on advocating and working on some of the program's key objectives, such as the protection of user rights from contractual override and the introduction of a, a secondary publication right, which I will be talking about today. Uh, so initially, I've planned to, to do an overview on the mechanism, uh, which Ben has already briefly done. Um, and uh, also, there have been uh, other uh, KR21 uh, webinars on this issue, so maybe this is the part that I will skip. Of course, uh, afterwards in the discussion, we may revisit it if, uh, if it's uh, necessary. Um, so Ben, maybe you know, skip, the, skip the next slide. Right, thank you. Uh, so, um, uh, talking about secondary publication right uh, in a copyright aspect, uh, the latest jurisdiction to introduce such solution uh, in, uh, in the EU was Bulgaria in the context of the amendment of the uh, uh, copyright law of the 1st of December uh, 2023, which uh, with uh, which main goal was to introduce the to to implement the CDSM directive, the Copyright in the Digital Single Market Directive. Uh, now, SPR or secondary publication right is not uh, an entirely novel concept for uh, Bulgarian copyright law. Um, there is a there is a pre-existing uh, Article sixty uh, in the Copyright Act entitled uh, Right to Reuse. Um, and it provides that the author has the right to use their work, which was already published in a periodical after the date of publication, unless otherwise agreed in writing. Uh, next slide, please, Ben. Oh, no, it's the same slide, sorry. Uh, so what does this, uh, this uh, uh, provision already provide for? First of all, um, the work or the publication in question, um, the pre-existing mechanism did not uh, set uh, many restrictions uh, concerning the type of publication eligible for reuse. Um, the provision specifies that uh, the, the work has to be published in a periodical, otherwise there are no restrictions concerning the work, the work itself. There are no restrictions concerning the version of the work that uh, could be republished. It could be the author's accepted manuscript, it, it could be the, the version of record. Uh, and there is uh, no mention of how the creation of the work was funded. Uh, so it's a very broad provision. Of course, the provision, uh, the provision did not uh, provide for embargo period, but of course, the possibility for contractual override of the provision made it ineffective and uh, left scholarly authors vulnerable to, uh, to scientific publishers' practices. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
Now, the implementation of the SPR in Bulgaria became possible because of the uh, very prolonged process of implementation of the CDSM directive. Uh, as you know, Bulgaria is one of the last member states to to implement the directive uh, that happened in the at the tail end of uh, 2023. So that just happened basically. Uh, on the one hand, Bulgaria was very late with the transposition, uh, more than two years of uh, delay um, after the transposition deadline, um, which also got uh, the country involved in, a, in, in an infringement proceeding. Um, I have to specify here that the government was not really uh, at fault here. Uh, the main reason for the de uh, delay was the fact that um, in the last few years, the country fell um, into a political crisis and was forced into multiple consecutive early elections. Uh, there was a string of short-lived parliaments which were not able to come through with the, with the adoption of the proposal. On the other hand, that gave the government time to be very diligent with the implementation procedure. There were several public consultations and a working party was formed with the Ministry of Culture uh, consisting of different stakeholders. The delay also gave all interested parties the opportunity to raise uh, arguments for a more consistent copyright reform and to, to continue the discussions in Parliament. Now, um, although uh, I have criticized some of the legal solutions the Bulgarian legislator introduced uh, in implementation of the CDSM directive, uh, I have to admit that the approach towards user rights in, uh, in the amending law was more holistic than the directive called for. So additional steps were taken to improve access to knowledge and culture in general and to scientific publications in particular. I will just uh, do a brief overview. Um, I will try to, to do it very briefly on the other uh, improvements that we got a part of the uh, secondary publication right mechanism. Uh, first, uh, concerning text and data mining for the purposes of scientific research. Um, an obligation of, on rights holders was imposed to provide the necessary access to users who have lawful access uh, to the materials, of course, within 72 hours following a request. Then concerning the general TDN exceptions, uh, exception, excuse me, um, the national legislator expanded on the way rights holders can exercise they, uh, their right to prohibit mining as per Article 4 of the CDSM directive. Uh, so, uh, so now the text requires right holders reservation be established prior to making the work available to the public and by technical means recognizable by, soft, by the software carrying out the automated analysis. Then, in addition, the Bulgarian legislator used the, the legislative initiative to further revise the regime of permitted uses. So we got uh, previously untransposed uh, InfoSoc exceptions such as the the parody and the incidental inclusion exception in their broadest form from the InfoSoc directive. Uh, we had pre-existing exceptions broadened, such as the press review and the reporting of current events exceptions, uh, broadened in scope. Uh, next, uh, we had some improvement uh, regarding the regimes for exceptions to neighboring rights, because until the last amendment, the regime of permitted uses uh, under Bulgarian law was inexplicitly fragmented. Um, unlike most EU countries where exceptions to related rights are regulated by a general referencing um, provision or a mutandis, uh, mutatis mutandis provision, in our case, the, the Copyright Act provided for specific references for each of the neighboring rights to certain um, copyright exceptions, seemingly uh, uh, entirely arbitrary. Uh, for example, the quotation exception, supply, uh, exception applied to the right, uh, rights of film producers and broadcasting organizations, but did not apply to the rights of performing artists and producers of phonograms. Uh, also, the pre-existing exception for reproduction by libraries uh, did, not, uh, did not apply to any uh, related right. Uh, so the last amendment synchronized that, which, which was a very big improvement in my view. 
Uh, and finally, on exceptions, most importantly, all exceptions in the law, um, except for the ones that uh, were uh, overreadable according to the law, were proclaimed uh, mandatory by, by a new general provision. Um, outside, the, outside the topic of uh, copyright exceptions, there are also some uh, important uh, amendments like uh, uh, in the previous version of the Copyright Act, uh, the licensing of rights was limited to a maximum of 10 years by a mandatory provision, and this mandatory provision was uh, repealed in its entirety, which is very uh, important uh, in the context of uh, open licensing, including, uh, including uh, for the purposes of uh, open access. Um, new slide, please, Ben. Okay, so uh, regarding the secondary publishing right, uh, by its very nature, the introduction of a, uh, SPR is not directly uh, required by the CDSM directive. However, uh, in my view, at least the mechanism follows the logic of the directive uh, uh, because uh, articles 18 and following um, set in place various instruments for the strengthening of the weaker posi bargaining position of authors and their protection vis-a-vis -vis, uh, primarily explo exploiters, which are in this case producers and publishers. Um, this is why I think that the, uh, the amendment of the existing Article uh, 60 of the Copyright Act uh, follows the spirit of these uh, provisions. Uh, and this was the reason why during the parliamentary stage of the implementation of the directive, an additional amendment was proposed by members of parliament aiming to improve the position of academic authors vis-a-vis -vis scientific publishers and granted them an unavailable, untransferable rights to publish specific works in a specific manner, as we will see now. Uh, next slide, please, Ben. So what is the, the new mechanism? The Copyright Act uh, Amendment uh, of uh, December uh, 2023 uh, includes the adoption of an imperative uh, restriction to the party's freedom of contract, prohibiting the contractual override of the already existing right to reuse for certain types of reuse of certain works. Um, the, mechan the, the provision reads that the author of a work of academic literature created on the occasion of a research, funded in whole or in part by public funding, shall retain the right to make that work or parts thereof available in educational or scientific repositories for non-commercial purposes after its acceptance for publication by a publisher and shall, shall be obliged to mention the, pur the publisher when doing so. Uh, next slide, please, Ben. Uh, so in terms of uh, type of, uh, of works eligible for reuse, uh, the new regime covers works of academic literature. There are no further requirements concerning the work or its length. Uh, although the provision is planned uh, in a chapter of the law, um, is placed in a chapter of the law regulating uh, publications in periodicals, the scope of the norm itself is not limited to articles, as you can see. Um, in contrast with provisions in other jurisdictions, the new Bulgarian SPR contains no restriction as to the version available for a secondary publication. Uh, the mechanism can very well apply to uh, author accepted manuscripts and to versions of record. Um, next slide, I think. Yes. In order for the mechanism to be applicable, uh, Article uh, 60, Paragraph 2 requires that the work is the result of research that is funded in whole or in part by, by public funding. There is, however, no mention uh, of a minimum percentage of public funding required for the publication to be subject to uh, SPR. Um, there is also no embargo period. The publication is reusable immediately after its uh, ex or should I say accessible immediately after its uh, um, acceptance for publication by a publisher. The publication must take place in um, educational and scientific repositories for non-commercial purposes, and the publisher of the primary publication must be mentioned. 
The Bulgarian solution does not specify any more conditions of further reuse of the work. This means it only provides for uh, access to the work uh, and it's silent considering the, wor the work's reuse. Okay, can we say three minutes, please? Thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, not much time. Okay. Um, lastly, the the instrument implies no obligation for the author to republish. It's just it's just the right, right. Uh, so, what makes the new provision more advantageous for academic authors than previously in the uh, is the express uh, prohibition of contractual override of the norm. Uh, you can see the text, and I will skip the last part here because uh, it's not that um, it's not that uh, uh, relevant. I think. Um, Next, I have planned to talk about uh, synchronization of the SPR and the works for higher regime, but we won't have time for that. So let's move to the last slide, please. What's next? So a part of the ownership over academic works in, a, in an employment setting, um, which which is an issue in my opinion. Uh, another issue that would uh, require further detail is the practical implementation of the new SPR mechanism. Uh, during the public consultations uh, of the proposed amendment, a number of stakeholders such as uh, research and uh, educational institutions raised questions as to where, meaning in which uh, repository and how would academic works be, be republished. Uh, so, in my view, all these issues are not of copyright nature, should be dealt with separately. Um, I am talking about further considerations regarding the format of secondary publication, which, which has to be an open format. The possible um, entities responsible for uh, publishing the works uh, to a repository, requirements uh, for such repository, uh, possible obligations of the authors to deposit or self-archive the, their published works. Uh, monitoring the process and so on and so forth. And currently there's a proposal for a law uh, on the promotion of scholarly research and innovation. Uh, it, it is freshly tabled in parliament. Um, and I think it's a great immediate opportunity to, to do just that. Uh, and also presents uh, representatives of the Bulgarian open movement and stakeholders a second round of opportunity to work towards synchronization of uh, copyright and open science regimes, at least to the extent permissible under the EU law. Uh, and um, that's all Ooh, from my thanks. side. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I look forward to the discussion then. Thank you very much, Anna, and thank, and thank you uh, also, of course, to Maya. So, um, we'll, if you can now um, just start in the chat, everyone to put any questions that you have for the presenters, we'll sort of pick out any interesting ones. So, yeah, so if, if you go to everyone, or that's what it says on my screen, if you just start putting questions in there, um, that would be good. I guess I'll just sort of um, perhaps uh, characterise what I heard, rightly or wrongly, um, that both Slovenia and Bulgaria have now joined the ranks of something like 10 countries now in Europe that have actually made changes to their legislation to support open science, to support secondary publishing, author rights retention, and and, and therefore allow um, parallel publishing. Uh, it contrasts in, in, in the UK, where we have a an author by author, institution by institution, um, con contract law based approach with all the sort of problems that that brings, that is every institution that has to negotiate these things, rather than what's happened in Bulgaria, <clears throat> in, in Slovenia, Germany, Belgium, Italy, France, etc., that has, has decided top down to introduce laws to support um, the republication of publicly funded research. So some of the sort of differences and similarities that I heard between Slovenia and Bulgaria is that in, in Slovenia, it has to be 50% funded, whereas in Bulgaria, it's whole or part. 
Um, in very interestingly, in Slovenia, it's publicly funded research. Um, so Maya mentioned software. So I think that's great that we have obligations for creators of software and AI software to make their software available. In Bulgaria, it's academic literature. In neither country I, did I hear an embargo. Um, so, so immediate access is possible. And I think crucially, um, what we heard from Bulgaria, which is the same in 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 countries like Germany, uh, France from memory, Austria, and a few others, that contracts which so between the author and the publisher cannot override the law. So the law says that you, as a researcher, can make your um, your 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 work available, and it doesn't matter what you've signed away in the contract. And I think that's particularly important and i think although that it's not explicit um i think the thing that knowledge rights 21 we like in the spanish law is that the spanish law requires immediate access so there is an obligation if you've received funds to to make your research publicly available so that was my um uh compare and contrast i don't know stephen have you read any of the questions as i i've been yam rabbiting on so i haven't had chance are there any questions that you've seen that um you would like or anna is there a question you would like to answer i i see two questions that are directed to myself concerning the output of uh, the research output the research data uh, there is, of course, uh, legislation on this, but it is not uh, of copyright nature. Um, this is the uh, transposition of the Open Data Directive, so the, the Public Sector Information Directive, and it's in a Public Sector Information Law. Uh, so there, there are uh, specific provisions that are basically a transposition of, uh, of European law. Uh, concerning access and reuse of uh, of publicly funded data, uh, which are in place, uh, the problem with uh, with um, scholarly excuse me articles is that uh, they are they are not considered data, and that the uh, the public sector information uh, legislation exclude excludes. Uh, um, subject matter that is protected by intellectual property generally excludes it from the uh, application of the um, open data legislation. I hope I, I could uh, answer your questions. Yes, thank you. So there's a question from Ivan Skubic. Um, under which license uh, in, in the Bulgarian uh, context can be used? are used perhaps will be used there is no mention of further licensing because there is no mention of further reuse in the copyright act otherwise in the open data legislation there is a there is an obligation to uh, um to uh, share data for reuse when it's publicly funded to share it for reuse under standard licensing and uh there is there is not an obligation a strict obligation to share the data under creative commons licenses but this is the uh, the licenses that are uh, actively promoted for for this purpose otherwise the um the requirement of the law uh, is to to share the data under standard licenses preferably under uh, under uh, public licenses public open licenses. Thank you. So I'll just combine uh, questions that I think are the same, straight, similar from Chris Morrison and uh, apologies for the pronunciation, Eva Melinschak Zlody. Uh, in Bulgaria, authors only... Um, so, so I guess this is an issue around the obligation Authors can keep the rights, have the rights to keep the rights, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they do anything with them. 
Um, so is there still a place for institutional policies that will um, change lazy academics like myself who can't be bothered to do anything or more interested they're on to the next thing and make this this a reality well can i ask yes sorry maya uh, i think i think uh so sorry i thought you said to go ahead so i think of course there is still place for institutional policies that's also the reason why in slovenia is such a structural and systematic support to the policy institutions. It would be, it. I think it's much, much more effective to support or in, in a way to support the design of the policies. It all needs to come and work together because if you would just have a law and no support and no other carrots, just a stick, it would be very, very difficult. And also it may be resistance from the prominent or water, academic authors to do something like that. So what I really admire uh, in our uh, legislative and strategic policy, and I'm usually very critical about, for, about legislation in this field and stuff, it's to not just lay down the laws, but also to give this structural support. Um, and, and so many things are happening at the same time. Anna, don't you want to... Uh, yes, uh, I, I also wanted to say that, of course, there's room for uh, for this, but also there's room for further uh, legal uh, improvements. Uh, just uh, in my opinion, the Copyright Act did what it had to do, and this is prohibit uh, the the full uh, the full assignment of rights and the, the exclusive licensing of uh, of rights over academic works to the. Uh, to the scientific uh, publishers, so it basically uh, le left room for uh, for reuse of these publications. And now uh, I feel like the the new amendment of the scientific law is actually the place where we could uh, discuss uh, further actions uh, in order to synchronize the whole process. Um, who are the the responsible parties for this? Who is obliged to to republish, or um, how how is the whole process monitored, and so on and so forth? Thank you. So, uh, just picking up on 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 Maya's points, if you look at the Knowledge Rights Twenty One funded report from Libra, which is on the website again, that's the conclusion. Uh, looking at Spain, you can have a beautiful law, but unless it's underpinned by action. Um, at the institutional level, it, it doesn't have an effect. So certainly um, having having the law is fantastic, especially when it, it, it doesn't allow it to be undermined by contracts. Um, in, but it's, you must have institutional um, policies, I think, to un underline it. And, and, and again, I think uh, which we haven't mentioned, the in May of 2023, the European Council, um, in their recommendations on scholarly publishing, has urged all, all member states to introduce laws like this to uh, skill up academics' knowledge about IP. So there is a push coming from Brussels to introduce legislation like we've seen in Bulgaria, Slovenia, and as, as I said, Spain, Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, etc., etc. Et um, so... I guess unless there's we're 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 over time. Um before I thank the speakers, I'd just like to do another plug. Uh so if you're introduced in, interested in uh copyright issues, our next webinar is on February the 15th, normalizing open norms, University of Bournemouth study on implementing flexibilities into copyright law in seven different jurisdictions. So um, please register for that. Um, again, just summing up, I think it's extremely exciting what we've, what we've heard today from Anna and Maya that um, finally, governments are perhaps tying up why public money is being used to, to, to fund research and actually making that a reality and, 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 and that publishers cannot override the purpose for which the research is funded. 
So I think, you know, finally, after many decades of open access, it's really great to see countries like Bulgaria and Slovenia, um, you know, bringing us close to, 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 the, to the ideal. Um, so, yes, so if you could say thank you very much to everybody in the reactions and um, we will... Um, we will close if you we will upload this webinar to uh, the website. So if you look at webinars, you can you can look at this again and you can also forward this to colleagues who weren't able to make it today. So, yeah, thank you very much.